Hey, could you tell us a little bit about your project? Certainly. Well, an active magnetic bearing is a system that floats frictionally underneath a steel plate. And what we've designed is an active magnetic bearing using some distance sensors and a few electromagnets. What was the design objective? Well, the design objective was to use two or three electromagnets and allow them to float um, frictionlessly underneath the steel plate. I had to demonstrate a locked mode where it was able to attach to the steel plate and then it also had to flow freely without touching the plate. Also, we were supposed to be able to hang weight on it and to implement our own current sensors. All right. Would you be able to show us a little bit about your project? Yeah, of course. Um, so the project is run using our target computer here and our host computer. We're running Simulink and XPC Target. We're interfacing with the hardware through these hardware in the loop boards right here and those feed into the key forward. And then we're powering our magnets with some Quanzer amplifiers right here. We also have a DC power supply, and what that does is powers our distance sensors and our current sensors, which are shown right there. Could you sh explain which, which one is which? Mm -hmm. So this breadboard here uh, is the input from our distance sensors. Um, that's a dual stage op amp circuit so that we're able to measure that using the Q4 board. And then over here, we have our current sensors on the breakout board right here. Um, using the Hall effect, we're able to measure the current without interfering with the magnet circuit. What's that other board? Oh, that's this other board here shows um, just a few diodes. That's a safety measure that we have in case the power supply drops, the current in the electromagnet still has a path to go through. OK. Um, would, we be, would we be able to see it function? Of course. So there we are floating frictionlessly beneath the steel plate. Just like that, we're hovering at a one millimeter air gap. So that's float mode. Now, why is it painted white? These are optical distance sensors. They use the visible spectrum, red light, and it reflects off of a surface and then gets captured in a photodiode, which creates some current. So that's how we measure the distance. So since these are optical, we need a good reflection surface, so we painted the steel white. Oh, great. Um, would we be able to see the control loop mm -hmm. that allows us to function? So here we read from the Kwanzaa board the voltage off the distance sensor, and then based on some earlier characterization of the distance sensors, we can change that into a position. We compare that position to a desired position here, and then we have an error signal. This displacement controller is a PD controller, and that generates an offset current from our equilibrium current. Our equilibrium current was characterized based on the magnet's properties earlier and the weight of the module. So now we have a new desired current, and that gets fed into a feed forward and a PI controller, which changes the voltage on the electromagnets in order to achieve some desired current. And then here we go through a switch which is controlling whether we're using the control loop or going into lock mode. That final voltage is then output to the Kwanzaa board, which runs through the amplifiers and onto the magnet. So to purpose our distance sensor, our extra one, as an optical switch, we used a D flip-flop. What that does is it looks for the rising edge when you place your finger across the distance sensor. So we see a voltage spike and it captures that rising edge and basically switches states whenever it sees the rising edge. You can take your finger off, but that's a falling edge, so it won't change. And then that is what goes over here to control these switches before it goes out to the analog output. And when you say lock mode, what is that? Well, we actually have an extra distance sensor, and we change that into an optical switch to allow us to attach to the metal. So when I place my finger over this optical switch, it locks firmly to the steel plate like this. And then I can press it again, and it'll go back into float mode, where it's floating frictionlessly. Oh. Now, you said you could hang weight on it. Would we be able to see that? Yes, of course. We have some washers here acting as weight. So we can place these on the hook that was designed for it right there. Now, now how much holding weight, we can still float around. How much weight do you think you can hold? 
Uh, the maximum is about 80 grams, which is almost half of the module weight. Are you able to go from floating to lock mode with weight? Yes. Here we go. There's lock mode. And then we'll go back into float mode, just like that, with weight on it. Now, what, what kind of practical purposes does this technology hold? Well, any type of time you want a frictionless surface, such as um, a big scale thing like a levitating train, or a small scale thing like magnetic bearings or rotating shafts, Anytime you would want a frictionless spinning thing like that, you could use a magnetic bearing. Oh, great. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.